What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials and pick up CMP555. Uh, my third MIDI pack, this is inspired by the album 444. This is um, 10 MIDI drum loops that um, you know you could customize to whatever you want, put, put, your, um, put your own sounds in it, and it's a straight time pack. You know, sounds ranging from 82 to 86 per minute. Um, this is all drums that have been transcribed from the 444 album and they're just a really good basis to start you know any of your sample ba based um straight time packs if you're going for that vibe um today we have an ableton live tutorial and i'm going to be kind of going over um how how i arrange with push and everything you know it took a you know it took a while to get comfortable with the arrangement coming from studio one um because it's just it's two different vibes um you know i work pretty much in in, in studio one i work in this view like in an arrangement type of view um where i'm just where i'm just programming linearly and um within within ableton it's more of a it's more of a groove box type of feel you know creating patterns uh similar to like fl studio or something like that where um pretty much i've got i've got these four different patterns that i'm going to base my arrangement around i get this one get this one So that's pretty much gonna make up my arrangement. When I get to this point in in the process, you hear the volume is really low. Um, that's because I um, I, I, I do. Uh I mix my track around the kick. Uh, I set my template up so that the kick is the loudest part of of the uh, of the track. That way, I can you know properly gain stage everything. So that when I go to add the, the mix bus compression, it's I don't have to move a lot of faders. It's already done for me. It's a mix as you go concept. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna trigger my loudest pattern and do you know the the mastering uh, part of the process first so by the time uh, i get done arranging i could just go ahead and export so i'm just going to go ahead and trigger the glue compressor and you see i'm just knocking off uh, a few db i'm going to go ahead and set the makeup so that i'm hitting negative six db on everything gorgeous it's already there now i'm going to pull up the infected mushroom pusher and um just go ahead and set this to the key of the track is e all right so i can go ahead and pull up the infected mushroom pusher here this is my favorite part of the push is you know everything is everything's on the encoders if you push this twice it'll bring you up to the you know the different um the different um parameters inside of the uh, of of the plugin so i'm just going to go ahead and um hit this push this is the um you know this is the gain reduction Turn down the output of this. Now I'm going to move on to the limiter. One thing I wish that the, um, I wish that I could, uh, leave me alone. Let's see here. There we go. Engage that guy. All 
All right, so boom, now I have a rough mix and master over the over the track, real simple, real easy. So for arranging, um, you know, I when I when uh, when everybody was telling me about you know the uh, you know Ableton and arranging, you're like, oh, it's so great to be able to record your arrangements. I really wasn't I really wasn't excited about that because I was so stuck in the uh, you know the the production process that I had before, um, but now recording arrangements it's just such a different dynamic um into the actual production process and i really like it so i'm going to go ahead in this main loop here i i haven't created an intro yet so i'm just going to press duplicate on the on the controller to bring up another version of that i'm gonna hold down i'm gonna hold down delete and just go into session view here I'm going to hold down delete and just get rid of the drums and that'll be my intro, right? So now I'm just going to press shift and play. That'll bring my playhead all the way back to one. I'm going to press record. And first, let me let, let me just give me a second to jam out and see what I want to do. So I caught a little vibe. That's typically what I do is I'll just kind of play around with something, catch a vibe. And then once I kind of figure it out, I just press record. So that's cool. And the th the thing I like about this um, method of arrangement, as opposed to Studio One, I still you know I still love working in Studio One. It's a it's it's very um it's very um, cerebral you know when it when it comes to arrangement. Um, working with the controller and work and working with your different patterns you create, I feel like this is a lot more. Um, this is it lends itself a lot more to just kind of feeling you just kind of feel how the track goes and sometimes you might come up with an accident and the accident might sound great and you wind up keeping that as opposed to you know as opposed to a linear based doll you know you're just kind of thinking your way through it so 
I, you know, I kind of seen uh, this this back part is the hook, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing uh, like twelve bar verses for this, um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and press Control D, and that'll, you know, that'll duplicate that out, um, and then and then that's pretty much that that you know that's pretty much the uh, the full arrangement, you know, two two verses right there. I could go ahead if I wanted to, you know, and make and make it, uh, you know, like a, a three verse type of thing. Before, you know, for the beats that I post and for the beats that I send to artists and everything, I usually only send two verses, um, just because like I'm especially in in Ableton Live Standard. I don't know if Sweet allows you to bounce as MP3. Standard only allows me to bounce as Wave. So having the two verses, you know, saves me a little memory in the Dropbox and everything for um you know um going ahead and, and and bouncing this um you know bouncing the files out because waves are take up a lot of space so you know we just go ahead double check our arrangement So you like right here I've got this drum rack set up where I have different effects and I noticed that I really like the way that you know this comes in on this part so I could just take this um, right here <laughs> go ahead and stop that you know double click on this clip See where are we at? So now that it, now that I know I want that um, you know to occur at the at, at the first part of these verses, I'm just gonna go ahead and press Control so I can drag it on over here. That way, after this hook drops. and go through the different ones I have. Just add something, something to spice up the beginning. up a little bit. Alright, and then after this, what I'll do is, um, I probably should do this way before. But um, this is another thing I like about live is I can name my beat after I create it. Um, studio One makes you name it before. All of my Studio One beats have like the most awkward and uh, strange names because I'm just I, I I catch anxiety. I'm like fuck, I have to name the beat and I don't know what it sounds like. So you know we'll call this call this Butcher because of the chops. Right, so you know, once you once you have this saved, you can just go ahead come on. You can just go ahead and set your parameters for your loop. Um, press control shift R. Make sure you know I'm going from bar to one ninety six, render track the master, boom boom boom. Export it. Where's my folder? Boom. 
and then just go ahead and render and it'll export the audio so that's you know pretty much um pretty much what I want uh, you guys to take away from this video is you know if you're if if you're at a place um, you know using using Ableton Live 9 and you know you stay stuck in in the um, in clip view and you don't know how to get out of it um, especially if you have a push I mean having a push changes everything you know if you if you're working with the push the best thing to do is just to go ahead into the session view um, you know mess around with the uh, with the, uh, with the scene triggers um, you know uh, if, if you only have one scene that you like you know go ahead and duplicate it out take a, take away some different elements from it um, you know get yourself get yourself a rough skeleton on the session view and then once you have the session view you know go in and then that's where you could add different VSTs, different drum samples, different effect samples, different different vocal hits, impacts, and things like that. You know, don't don't try to you know create the whole beat in clip view. Um, give yourself you know give yourself uh, some space to breathe, and you know use the um, use everything that this doll has to offer you while um, not overloading yourself and trying to use everything that the doll has to offer you because i think that's where a lot of people go wrong in live is there's so many different things that you could do is people try to do all of the different things that you could do like if you're if you're a hip-hop sample based producer this is a really great draw doll if you strip it down and you make it simple that's why i didn't get um sweet you know i wanted i wanted the most simple version that still had you know adequate power for me so anyway this is cmp with craftmaster production studio one tutorials.com keep it simple don't be basic and we will see you on the next one